The microstrip line is a great way to model traces. Uh, one of its limitations, however, is that it's pretty much point to point. It doesn't allow you to really route a line and include um, bends, mitered bends, or even curves. Uh, in this uh, example, we're going to talk about the uh, MC trace and M trace models, which essentially in an MLIN format allow you to do that very thing. So to start out with, we're going to have our venerable MLIN here, and I've designed using TX line, the transmission line calculation tool, the width and length of this line uh, for this FR4 material so that we have a good 50 ohm match, and it's approximately 9.2 mils. Um, I've copied that to another schematic called MC trace. There's the layout for both the MLIN and the MC trace, just a straight line. But in the MC trace example, I'm currently using MLIN, and it changes to an MC trace model that has the same width and length and the same material. What I'm going to do is just simply type in the word MC trace. And in the AWR design environment, this instantly just swaps out the model for me and uses any default parameters or set parameters um, that were on the previous element for this element. So you can see here we have a width of 9.2 and a length of 9.2. And if we go back to the layout, it is in fact just a straight line again. Um, we can simulate this and we can look at the 50 ohm match and essentially for both our MLIN and MC trace, we have identical results. And we can look at the through <clears throat> and we're comparing this to a highly accurate EM simulation using Axiom. And you can see some periodicity in here and that our loss is uh, overestimated, if you will, with the MLIN and MC trace models. Okay, so MC trace essentially reduces down to MLIN when it's just a straight line element. How do we incorporate bends and, and uh, curves into it? Well, simply, or the easiest way we could do this is we can just go into the layout and start routing this by hand. And you can include 45 and 90 degree angles or whatever angles you want. And you can see here that in the annotation, it tells me what length I'm at. So I'm gonna try to get it pretty close to being back to um, 300, I'm sorry, 400 mils. And then afterwards you can hand edit this if you want. Um, you can reach in and grab the element properties right off the schematic. And you can see here, I'm gonna click secondary properties, that we're storing of two extra vectors. One is a vector of the uh, curve bends or curve angles. And here's the position of each curve along the length of the line. So in this way we're establishing a vector of this information that allows us to capture uh, in the model, the information that we need to model it. And internally to the model, it then tiles together M lins and M curves, in the case of the MC trace, to, um, to adequately model this in the uh, software. So if we now compare uh, the through here, we should see a, a slight difference between M lin and MC trace because we're calculating those uh, curves, or those curves are now incorporated into the model as well. One additional thing we can do is if we go back to the schematic using the extract flow, which is essentially schematic driven EM, we're going to, instead of using the MLIN and MC trace, uh, I'm sorry, MLIN and M curve models tiled together internal to this element, we're going to use Axiom to model this. So let's do that. And what is going to happen using the extract flow is that it takes the layout, creates an EM document from it, puts down the ports, and then runs the simulation. You can see here's my Axiom EM document with the ports, and it matches precisely the structure that we laid out um, in the MC trace example. If we now look at the through performance, <clears throat> we can see that MC trace has that same sort of structure that we saw for the Axiom MLIN simulation, again, because we're getting a much more accurate representation of those curves and of the loss involved here. Uh, one last thing that we can do is if you don't like to use curve traces, we can use mitered bends, and we get that by just changing, again, the model name from MC trace to M trace. You can see that we now have bend type parameter here. And if we look at the layout, we in fact now have mitered bends. Well, if you'd like more information about how to use the extract flow, about MLIN or MTrace or MCTrace, Axiom, or any of the things I've shown you here today, I encourage you to go to the AWR TV and look at more videos. There's plenty of information on the AWR website, examples, white papers, um, that sort of thing. And if you'd still like more information, please contact your AWR sales professional.